this installment of Notman Notes, we'll focus on two items. It will focus both on options basics, which is more of a narrative discussion, and it will focus on simple options strategies, also considered to be single option positions. A later installment on options will focus on complex positions. So this one will focus on basic positions with a later installment discussing complex positions. Anytime in the exam you see a question on options, you should always plan on writing it out in this format. So even though it will be given in a paragraph, just write it out like this. So in this particular example, we're going to buy 10 XYZ Jan 35 calls at 3. Okay, so let's go through this step by step. So we are buying call options. We own calls. This 10 is the number of contracts. And a basic options contract, a standard options contract, represents 100 shares of stock. So this position represents 10 contracts times 100 shares. So this position represents a total of 1,000 shares of stock. Represents 1,000 shares of stock. XYZ is the stock in question, XYZ Corporation Common Stock. January is the expiration month. And standard options expire on the Saturday following the third Friday of the month. They expire on the Saturday following the third Friday of the month. Thirty-five is the strike price. That's the price at which a transaction will be, will be executed. It's the price at which a transaction will be executed if the option is exercised. And the combination of the expiration and strike price is called the series. So every unique combination of the expiration and strike price is called the series. So if the strike were different, like it was the Jan 45s, it would be a different series. Or if the expiration were different, if it were the Feb 35s, that would be a different series. Calls and puts refer to the class. Okay. So because these are call options, a call option represents the right to buy. A call option represents the right to buy. So we have the right to buy 1,000 shares of stock for $35. We have the right to buy 1,000 shares of stock for 35 bucks. And this three is the premium. It's the cost of the contract on a per share basis. So this total position costs us $3 per share times 100 shares per contract times 10 contracts. $3 per share times 100 shares per contract times 10 contracts. This position costs us a total of $3,000. Put another way, the premium is the market value of the option. It can be also be thought of as the market value of the option. Anytime an investor buys an option, the investor can subsequently do three things with that option. The first thing the investor can do is exercise the option, which means in that case when we bought a call previously, we'd exercise and buy the stock. Second, if the investor does nothing, the option will eventually expire, and again it will expire on the Saturday following the third Friday of the month. Or the investor can liquidate the position. This is important. There are two core, core fundamental concepts to understanding options. The first is understanding that an option is a security. So just like when you buy stock, if you buy an option, you don't have to hold it until the end of time. You can choose to sell the option. You can trade it. So if you have an opening purchase, which means you buy an option, how would you get rid of it? You sell it. 
And let's say you have an opening sale. Let's say you initially sell an option. It's equivalent to shorting stock. If you have an opening sale, how would you offset or liquidate the position? You buy the stock back. So again, um, when you own an option, this is a key concept to understand, is you're not required to either exercise or let it expire. You can trade the option, and you might profit or you might lose, but you can always trade the option.